Hey guys, it's John. You're the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, and I'd like to show you my new design for a replacement bridge. Features I was looking for is a bridge that is strong and secure and one hand operational to either add slack or remove slack. I also wanted a bridge where the frictional component is really close to my bridge loop. I don't want that interfering with my ability to be mobile and turn left and right. So let me show you what I got here. Just real quick on the system. So I've got a saddle hunter's hitch on the tree. I've got a JRB ascender hitch in uh, a 523 JRB ascender in bridge mode to get that one hand operation. And here is my bridge. And I've got the frictional component on the right side no metal except for a small chain link and I'm going to show you how I constructed that. Now normally I would operate this with my right hand but just to keep you in view what I'll do here is remove some slack with from my bridge with my left hand. Now the first thing you're going to notice is there's two strands forming my bridge and that's by design. This is seven millimeter cord and the seven millimeter cord has a breaking strength of over 2,700 pounds and with four strands effectively holding my weight, it's extremely strong, I find no reason to go with anything heavier. And this sterling cord operates great. Now let me, let me take some slack and put it back in. Again, one hand operation. So what I have here is effectively a tensioning device. My bridge is constructed of a tensioning device with no mechanical devices. There are two knots in the system. One of them, and, and that's providing the friction, is a variant of the Blake's hitch. There are plenty of videos on how to do a Blake's hitch, and I'll go over the exact variant I used here, which you actually won't, won't find in the book. It's a, a, a slipped Blake's hitch that I came up with years ago. And the other knot you're already aware of from the uh, video on my knot tying channel, and uh, playlist I should say and that is the hunter's bend. So we've got a Blake's hitch variant and hunter's bend is all I needed to create this. So so again I am taking slack in and out of the system with one hand. I will temporarily take this out of view for my climbing methods I use two bridges and so I will really quickly show you uh, that I've got the other one rigged up to be adjustable on my left side. And this one, I used a delta link. So there is metal on this one. I've been experimenting with this for a couple of months now to see which option I like the best. Now, once you've got some metal in the system, it's, a, it's actually a little smoother because that line is, is grinding across the delta rather than your bridge loop. So if you're gonna use it a lot, and if you'd like it really smooth, you might wanna use yours with a delta link. I don't adjust mine very often, and tops once a climb. And so I'm gonna go with the no metal option for me. And you get the option of having it adjustable on the left or the right side. I think I'm gonna move both of mine to be adjusted on the right side. So this video will show how I deconstruct this, so you can see what's in it, and then how I reconstruct it on the right side. Okay, so let me show you how I uh, here get slack in and out of the system. So I want to take slack out of the system, I pull here, and you can see this line is moving. And now, if I want, this is quite difficult without a camera operator, and I apologize. Now I'm taking slack and putting it into the bridge. And there's zero travel here. So I know that doesn't look like a Blake's, but it is. It's a slipped Blake's hitch. And the bridge loop itself is providing stability for it. This bridge is constructed with a single piece of cord. So I'm starting on my left bridge loop and you've got that piece of seven millimeter cord. And I used nine feet to construct this thing. Two strands go up, they go through. Now I'm using a swivel uh, beaner. You might just be using a regular carabiner, that's fine. Come down the other side. And so then we've got this monster. All right, so what's going on here? Well, 
first point is this is our frictional component this is a Blake's hitch variant this little link of chain is merely used as a stability device to make sure that the Blake's hitch never flops through my bridge loop if I were using the Delta link you wouldn't need it it just makes sure everything stays in place so if we learn how to tie this slip Blake's hitch all we need to do is put a hunter's bend at the other end now this is really important because a key point about this uh, bridge is that if anything went wrong with the Blake's hitch it didn't hold you didn't tie it right anything like that it's a closed system there's no stop or not at the end of it the two ends of my single piece of seven millimeter cord are closed in a hunter's bend it can't go anywhere and again this is really difficult for me to do uh, with uh, one hand on the camera and one hand on the system but I am currently you can just watch how that moves see both lines are moving I'm taking slack out so and, and now I will put slack back in by pulling on this line and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deconstruct the one on my left side will give us a little better visibility when we use that lighter color and I will reconstruct it on the right side to manage uh, to match what you just saw okay so I want you to get a look at this link of 3 16 inch galvanized chain just something I had laying around in the garage and it, it works great because it slips really well over that seven millimeter cord in fact there it goes over two strands of cord I also tied it uh, with you know this is quarter inch uh, galvanized chain and that that worked fine it's just a little bigger than I needed so you can go to the hardware store and grab you know just a bit of this and take a either a set of bolt cutters or a hacksaw and get yourself one link to create that and here in the woods I'm not going to demonstrate it but this being uh, nylon cord it's very easy to put a, a lighter on the end of it for 10 or 15 seconds and then take a rag and swab that off and it makes a very nice and clean and tidy end on your seven millimeter cord again I used nine feet to create my bridge I can't tell you the exact length you'll need for yours could be a little more or a little less I always like to err on the side of cutting a little more cord than I use and then cutting down and what's really nice about this nylon accessory cord is it's not a big deal you don't have to worry about whipping your ends or or any great deal of effort to take a little off of the ends when you're done okay so I need you to know how to tie the Blake's hitch and in particular the slipped variant I will be using and so with my cord uh, draped around my saddle hunters hitch I will have this strand here be the standing end and this in my left hand be the working end and I am going to pass the working end behind the standing end I realized that you'll see Blake's hitch videos with it started in front I'm doing this for a reason so if we want to tie a, an adjustable loop out of a Blake's hitch I've got the standing end hanging down and I've got the working end coming up from below and I'm I've got about a foot and a half to work with here two feet I'm gonna make four coils in an upward fashion so one two three four and then I pass this around behind where I started now this is important that when you tie a Blake's hitch you got to make sure you've got four you didn't skimp you've got four all on all sides and a standard Blake's hitch what you do next is you pass this back up through the bottom two and some people will put a finger in there to leave room but now so that's a standard Blake's hitch then we will put a stopper knot on here all I'm doing different is I am passing this end back down through now everything you're seeing here in this orientation is actually going to be upside down when we do it on the bridge so it's important you get your knots solid and you're able to uh, to tie them upside down and backwards 
So this is a, a slipped Blake's hitch. I really couldn't say it's very stable, right? Because you could accidentally spill it by pulling uh, this line out. But in the configuration we'll be using it in our, our bridge, it's quite uh, stable because our bridge loop or our delta link will be going in that location. So that's, in a, that's, that's a friction hitch right there. It's Blake's hitch. And if I want to remove it, pull that line out and it disappears. Slipped Blake's hitch. Um, so let me tie that one more time. I tie it slightly differently this time intentionally. I'll truly tie it slipped. One, two, three, four. Down behind. Now, when I first came up with this, I would tie it this way. I would just pass a bite up through both lines. We just won't be able to tie it this way because our bridge loop needs to be inside of there. And so we couldn't possibly have passed that up. It's just, just not possible to have something in there. So we'll be tying it this way. We will have bring up, we will have completed a Blake's hitch and then pass this line back down through. Okay, between that and the Hunter's Bend, you've got all the pieces you need to know. And now I'm gonna get on with tying this. Okay, I've got my backside parked on a fallen tree. Let's build this bridge. What I've done is I've taken that nine feet of seven millimeter cord and I've fed it in from the front and I've captured that link of chain in the front. So that's, that's sitting in front, can't fall out. Goes in the front bridge loop on the right and on the left. And on the, on the left side, because I'll be tying the Blake's hitch on the right, I've got that 24 inches. I pre-measured that before I started recording. So I can start to build my slipped Blake's hitch right here. And so let's get started. Just like you saw a moment ago, I'll take that 24 inch line and I will pass it under the other end. And I will make four coils towards my right hip. One, two, three, four. I'll then pass it behind standing part and up through two coils. That's going to just build a standard Blake's without a stopper. That's a standard Blake's hitch. But now comes the magic. Now's how we take What's fundamentally an unstable knot, that slip Blake's hitch, what would we ever use that for? I never actually had a good application for it until now. Because this provides the stability. Whether it's your bridge loop or if you're tying this on a delta link, I mean, I hope that's really obvious. If you wanted a delta link or a carabiner, you just would be building this whole thing on that instead of this. But by taking this around, this is, this is gonna create the stability. It's no longer a slipped entity because it can't slip. Yeah, I can't pull this out. And I'll take that back through two strands. So I've, I've just built that fixed, that slipped Blake's, but it's not, it's not slippable anymore because it got a fixed host. And now I will finish it off. Now here's the thing that's easy to forget. And, and, the, and the whole reason for this link. If I didn't have this link to create some stability here, this whole assembly it can kind of flop around and it can, it can actually get under the bridge loop. And that's why I'm really glad I took my time to make this video and made sure I had plenty of reps in the system in real world climbing and hunting situations to, to shake out any failure modes that I could possibly come up with. And it's been working fabulously. And I've, I, as I mentioned earlier, I've come to the conclusion I want mine to be a no metal system. If you do use a Delta link, you might not need this link chain here. You can tune it for yourself as you see fit, but I found it did not need it because it would not reorient under a Delta link. Okay, so what I've got to do is I've got to capture this link of chain. Just got to capture it there before I make my hunter's bend. And now this might test your ability to make a hunter's bend because you're doing it in a different orientation. I'm just pretty, pretty adept at this. So, uh, Hunter's Bend, of course, as you know from the dedicated video on my uh, knot tying playlist, is really just the marriage of two overhand knots. I made one, and, and I, if you didn't notice, uh, and I'll point it out, I, I, I'm making it as 
close and tight as possible taking every opportunity to take slack out of this I know you can't keep your eye on everything I'm doing here but if you've done your homework on a hunter's bend you could you can take your time and inspect that that it, it meets all the qualifications front and back of a hunter's bend mine does and so now I have a completed bridge it hasn't been set yet but even with just that little bit of dressing I am able to take slack out by pulling on on this line and you know you'll take a little getting used to, to to remember which end is which you've got a total of four strands here which ones do I pull there's two magic strands well to take slack out of your bridge you always do so from the loop and you obviously you can't do much with the one that's got the bend on it so it's always the other end can't pull towards uh, the bend you pull the other one and that takes slack out of your bridge so I'll take it down as short as I can take it as short as I can it's a belt and then when I want to bring slack in I pull the outer one and now I've just taken all of it out all right let's go back on the tree and show you this in action okay let's give it a maiden voyage so uh, one other feature about this bridge I like is you've got options for how to affix your carabiner. Uh, you might recall in my first video on creating a redundant bridge, I like to pass my carabiner and have the lines cross. It gives me a little bit more friction. I do like that on my Munter friction hitch because my carabiner is always in that left to right orientation. And so I might actually run mine this way, but I think most users will probably put their beaner on uh, in a conventional fashion. Uh, and so let's just go ahead and do that and put it on the line. Now, I know a lot of folks pay a lot of attention to which way their, their gate is uh, with respect to the tree, and that, and that is smart. Uh, I will say, anytime my gate might be touching the tree, I'm, I'm pretty far out of position. That would never actually happen to me on a hunt, so I, I tend to actually have my beaners oriented uh, again in a transverse fashion so I'll leave it this way for now and let's just see how that works so let's take a little slack out of it one hand let's put a little slack into it okay so it's the outer strand the strand that's headed into the chain link I pull on that and this loop's getting smaller. I'm sitting lower. Less, less hip pinch. So it's not going to be smooth as a mechanical device, and it's but it's smoother if you use the delta link. Again, I prefer just a no metal system. If you're the type of climber or or hunter who likes to change their uh, bridge length a lot during the sit, well then you might want to go with uh, delta link on one side. Thank you very much, and I really hope this came through. It was a little bit tough without a camera operator, but uh, hopefully we got her done. Thank you.